batch gradient descent versus stochastic gradient descent versus mini batch gradient descent let's see so the regular gradient descent is often also called the batch gradient descent where what we are doing is we are trying to go in the negative gradient direction of the loss function so imagine you have like you know a loss surface so at any time you're going in the negative gradient direction to get closer and closer to the local minima and finally you want to reach the local minimum now the batch gradient descent what it does is it when you are looking at the loss function the loss function is computed over the entire data set so what you're doing is you have like multiple parameters let's say theta 0 and theta 1 in general theta j is a the jth parameter j is the parameter index right if you have two parameters let's say then you want to compute the loss function with respect to these two parameters and when you do so you will sum over all the instances and compute it over the entire training data set and then when you do a weight update for each of these parameters you will take a derivative with respect to the entire data set and hence you will have that summation somewhere right so what is nice about batch gradient descent the nice thing is it's guaranteed to converge to a local minimum and it's well suited for problems with small and manageable data sets now what if we have like a very large data set with large data sets it can be computationally expensive as it requires storing and processing the entire data set to compute those gradients and it is also prone to get stuck in local minima for non-convex cost functions so when you have multiple minima when you take these long confident strides across the entire data set you might miss the op the best minima and you might you know skip to be closer to a different local minimum and you might end up going into that right okay so the next is stochastic gradient descent stochastic gradient descent is basically similar to the previous case but you're actually doing the update one data point after another so you do it for each of the parameters but one data point i at a time right of course the updates are faster since you're processing only one data point at a time and it can escape local minima due to noisy updates very often so what's happening is you're not taking the strong and long confident strides like you were doing in the case of batch gradient descent but you're doing taking a small stride for each data point and it is not necessarily the negative gradient with respect to the overall loss function right so it's like going zigzag 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 something like this and eventually coming to the local minimum and um, what could happen here is like because of this it could there's a good chance that it might not fall into the trap of skipping a global minimum and it might you know that that's an advantage in many cases so this noisiness could help it escape a suboptimal local minima sometimes and get into a global minimum now what are the disadvantages so the noise from each individual example can lead to erratic convergence and oscillations so the convergence properties are much more complex for you know the stochastic gradient descent but can we reach a middle ground that's what a mini batch gradient descent is so when we have large data set sites uh, normally we have multiple batches which we call as mini batches and the third option is to do the gradient descent at a mini batch level so this leads to a faster convergence compared to the batch gradient descent uh, especially for large data sets and it's more computationally efficient since it processes data in batches so uh, what is what you're seeing here is like you know the mini batch size is let's say b so you're actually adding over all the examples instances in the mini batch to compute your gradient now the convergence can be less stable compared to batch gradient descent due to the noisier updates from smaller batches so it's we're taking a middle ground here where we're going like slightly zigzag uh, so it is a little less stable than uh, you know batch gradient descent uh, but it is also you know it has some advantages of being more efficient so we looked at a comparison between batch gradient descent stochastic gradient descent and mini batch gradient descent algorithms we looked at what each of these algorithms are and what their advantages and disadvantages are so 
Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.